Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight I'm going to show my workflow for uh, my latest attempt at the running man. Now of course uh, this uh, nebula gets uh, is, is kind of a sidekick to the Orion nebula and I wanted to use my 8 inch telescope to give it a give it some attention. I find the Running Man Nebula to be a very cool uh, nebula. It's a reflection nebula with those uh, bright hot blue stars in there and there's so much dust that's being illuminated by those stars. It's just a very cool object. And I felt like uh, in order to do this target justice I needed to make it a, a two panel mosaic with the edge uh, to try and capture as much of the surrounding dust as possible. So what I did is I processed panel one and panel two separately. Uh, then I combined them using gradient merge mosaic in Pixinsight and then did the final uh, processing together. And so I use a workspace, workspaces in Pixinsight. So workspace one, I worked on frame one and here's frame one. And then workspace two, I worked on frame two and then I did the mosaic work uh, in Workspace 3. So I'll show you the uh, workflow process uh, that I did on uh, panel 2. Alright, so let's look at the stacked shots here first. So this is our luminance. There's our blue. And our green. and our red. So now I did something a little different uh, than what I typically do. I, I used to do this a long time ago and then I kind of got away from it. Uh, basically I didn't get as much luminance data as I wanted to and uh, for the past couple of months it seems like most of our clear nights have been with the moon out so that really limited uh, what I could do luminance wise. And so while I did use the red, green, and blue uh, for color data, and um, you can see it right here, this is just a LRGB combination of those three frames. I uh, also just stacked everything together into a single master luminance, and I, I used uh, uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, this was just, it was quick did a nice quick job and, and I like the results. So here you can see red, green, blue, and luminance. I just stacked all of them together uh, and ended up with this here. And so this kind of creates like a like a master luminance if you want to call it. And we can do a comparison of the two here. Now I mean they don't look too different from each other. But if we do a close-up comparison, this one is definitely better than this one. I mean, it's really hard to tell, probably on YouTube, but if I zoom in a lot, Definitely less noise here. All right, so let me walk you through the color first. All right, so we got color. Here it is with uh, dynamic background extraction on it. And here's where I did color calibration. And all I did for color calibration is I just use the background neutralization. And I didn't do any settings, I just dropped it on there. And then I did the same for color calibration. And then, uh, let's see, yeah, that's what the channels liked. And that's what I ended up with. So the reason I do this is because you want to have both panels color calibrated and dynamic background extraction and even a stretch applied before doing the uh, 
uh, gradient merge mosaic. So as far as luminance, um, ran dynamic background extraction against it. And then I did uh, deconvolution. And so you can see the mask uh, that I use. So the deconvolution was only applied to uh, this area here. And we'll just take a close-up look. You can see a tiny little bit of ringing in these really bright stars, but it's pretty much unnoticeable once once you uh, get everything put together. All right, and so next I have to apply a stretch to both the um, luminance and the color. And I actually just used the auto stretch. It did a good job with this one. I didn't feel like the stars were bloated from it at all. And so here's the color. You see I blurred it out. Uh, and the blurred out I just used these settings here on MMT. Just apply these to the color image and it smoothed it right out. And that's what the luminance added on there. Uh, now I'm realizing I just forgot one step. Uh, after DBE, but before uh, deconvolution, I did run some noise reduction. And I used Easy Processing Suite, Easy Denoise. And I didn't use the MMT on the, the noise reduction for the luminance. I just used TGV settings. And it did a pretty good job. I have found running noise reduction before deconvolution works pretty good. Alright, so there's our panel. And uh, I got the other panel to the same state and then I was ready to put them together. Okay, so uh, I have other videos on my channel where I go over the mosaic process. Uh, for this I use the star alignment process right here uh, to align the panels with each other and then I use the gradient merge mosaic. Now there are other ways to do mosaics. Um, one, there's a script over here. If I can find it. Oh, uh, mosaic. There you go. Uh, yeah, photometric mosaic. Uh, I've not messed around with it. I've actually gotten very comfortable with star alignment. And I think with just uh, two panel or four panel mosaics, uh, this works pretty well. So yeah, here's what it looks like with the two panels. This here is the rough mosaic that you create initially using the star alignment process and then you use this as a reference. And uh, once the panels are ready, you run them through the gradient merge mosaic process. Let's see if it should still have the settings that I use in here. Yeah. So frame one and frame two, overlay, I use a feather radius of 23, black point of 0 0.01, and this was the outcome. Now, actually, I had rotated and cropped, so let's, let's just back up real quick there. Okay, this is what the outcome was, and let's see how those seams look. All right, so we got a little bit over here. And I was thinking of maybe using clone stamp or Photoshop healing brush to take care of that. But as I was inspecting the corners, I was like, you know what? The stars up in this area look don't look very good anyway. And, you know, I mean, why? There's nothing here. So I ended up just cropping it like right over here. That's an easy way to fix some crappy looking stars. Otherwise, it came out really good. 
anything. I don't see any seam here. I don't see any distortions. And so after I cropped it, it, it looks like a single image. All right, so I just made a clone of this so I can work freely and not worry about losing my spot. So let's step through the, uh, the actions that I took. So here we go. I actually took a little bit of green out, just a little bit. And I took the stars out. And then here it was mostly curves work. My goal was to try and create some separation uh, between these uh, fainter areas of dust and this dark background. All the while being reminis uh, being aware that I have dark areas in here and I'm not wanting these spots to get too dark. So just stepping through curves. Uh, here you can see an adjustment in the color, probably saturation. Okay, uh, now we have a mask here. Notice the outside is starting to get a little bit too dark here. Let's look at this mask, yeah. So the next thing that I'm going to do is increase the brightness, again with curves, while preventing the center from getting too bright. And that's what we see here. I was actually quite surprised. I didn't realize how much color uh, there was in the dust back here, some of the blue. I mean, it, it didn't stand out here, and all I did was increase the brightness a little bit, and it kind of revealed itself. It's, it's interesting, this hobby, how you can see things uh, pull out. I mean, this stuff is there, but you don't normally see it, and so it's fun. That's one of the attractions to this hobby for me is is revealing. You know, I don't want to say hidden secrets, but that's that's kind of like what it is. You're you're revealing details that are not normally there without the processing. All right, let's see. I think I saw the same mask on. Yeah. So, no, it's a different mask. And this is probably where I was wanting to uh, tweak the, the hue of this blue here. Yeah. And it looks like this is where I ended up with on this Starless version. I think this Starless version is actually really cool. I mean, it, 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 the dust here just looks really awesome, I think. Uh, I used uh, Star Exterminator to pull the stars out. Uh, but I think on this whole image, I think this this area right here is my favorite part. Just the way this dust here looks. Alright, so let's work on the stars. Here they are. Let me back up. Okay, so that's what they look like uh, after Star Exterminator pulled them out. Uh, so using curves just to pull back on them. Yeah, I don't do anything fancy with the stars. I don't use morphological transformation or anything. The stars did get a treatment from uh, running deconvolution earlier, which I think helps. So I find that just pulling back on the curves does a nice job. And even though it's RGB uh, broadband, uh, you do tend, especially when you pull back on the curves, it starts to give a strong uh, green signal and a strong purple signal. And so I find that you have to do the old trick of inverting, subtracting green, and, and then subtracting green again. And this is where I ended up with. So we've got some oranges and some blues there. Keep in mind that these colors from the stars do get overlaid into your image. So you're not always going to retain the exact color. I tend to uh, s heavily saturate the stars to help push some of that color through once you combine them. And so after combining them with um, pixel math, this is what I ended up with. I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. I mean the processing you saw other than the 
using the um, gradient merge mosaic tool and, the, and the, the setting up for that, there wasn't any kind of fancy processing on here. And I mean, deconvolution and, and then just some basic curves and mask work, and that's pretty much it. Now, well, orientation is kind of a funny thing, isn't it? So, I mean, this is the common, this is the orientation that you would expect it to be in. Uh, but I kind of played around a little bit. Let's see which one, which way I liked it the most. I mean, there's no up in space, right? <laughs> so, I mean, if we care, if, well, if we try to orient it the way it looks, you know, from standing on the surface of the Earth, I mean, that's one way to do it. But at least for this one, I think this orientation is kind of what I like the most. I, I like having uh, the blue here with this uh, dust up top. I think it looks really cool. So uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, what you think, which orientation you like, uh, any suggestions, and uh, otherwise, uh, please like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and uh, have a good evening.